know, maybe everyone's a little bit tired of hearing about this, but it's coming. So the slowdown that's going to happen next year, the slowdown that's already started. And before you turn us off because it's more bad news, I think we do what we do because we're thinking about all the folks, you know, kind of in the retail space that are going to be impacted as consumers slow down um, their buying or, um, you know, even now they're getting um they're getting smarter about the way they buy they're getting more totally. efficient about the way they buy um they're going to be looking for cost effective right so this is also not shrinkflation or any of those things i think this is more about how do you as a brand prep how do you as a distributor or a retailer kind of prep for next year I makes sense kenny makes total sense makes total sense yeah yeah, what and do you want to go with this, Phil? I what think, are you thinking, Mr. Chang? I I think um, I think I, I think the caveat I want to I want to throw out because well, you know the brands that listen to us in particular, yeah. we have a lot of brands that play in premium spaces, premium um, and or sort of nichey, correct? You know, quasi correct. mainstream, sort of, but correct. Really, in sort or, of a nichier type of world. Yeah, nichey trying to make to close a gap to mainstream. Right. So. So I think the first thing I want to say is this isn't a knock on what you're trying to do because we actually love all of the brands we talk to. We love what they're trying to accomplish. We love, you know, whether you're someone like Humble Snacks and you're trying to um, normalize a compostable chip bag, um, I think is um, cool. It's just wickedly cool it and is. just an amazing thing, um, you know, to to like all of the different, you know, the vegan cheeses and, and, um, you know, our friend Yogu has probably the Yogu. best tasting. Chiwis has got some cool things. You know, like you know, Yogu's Vian's probably got, got the cool best yogurt I've the tasted, hippies. period, right? Like I told you, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. But, right? but what, but I guess what we're after is like, so what rings for me is recognizing when, where you are in the process of scaling and then where you are in the process of making the leap, uh, you and your category are making the leap from niche to mainstream, right? Because right. uh, th there are quite a few brands that we know and quite a few categories where they are in the midst of making big, big leaps, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and so I think it's, um, as you see the slowdown coming, it's not about what you're trying to do, but it's also about limiting exposure too. So I think you got to step yeah. back and look at, okay. you may want to take the leap and your brand might want to take the leap. Is your category and the consumer going to be on the same leap as you? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's, what's been worrying me. And that's why, you know, we, we've had this discussion, you know, many times over the last couple of mm -hmm. weeks is because we are in a very unique position, you and I, in a lot of respects. Yeah. Probably more than most. I know that sounds big, but it but it's true. Mm -hmm. We manufacture. Mm -hmm. We own brands. Mm -hmm. We import. We export. Mm -hmm. uh, we own retail, and we work for distributors. So there, I hate to say it, you know, that's not boastful. Not many people cover that much of retail mm -hmm. in the same day. Mm -hmm. You could be a buyer for a large company. You could be working for the distributor. You could have your own brand. But we are really in a very unique position to be owners, founders, uh, retailers, on cash, off cash, doing pricing in the back, working for distributors, doing import, doing export. Like seriously, there's a lot of things. So I think we just get a broader scope of what sort of looks like might be coming and – you know, like it does worry me a little bit. It really does. And I don't want, like yeah. you said, I don't want to yeah. make this into a negative Nelly podcast. Yeah. But you've got to be understanding of where your buyers within retail are going to be because their consumers are going to be dictating where they want to be. So so if we boil this down a little um because we, we've kind of like made Makes a sense. bunch of we, we've made a bunch of footnotes around like who we don't want to offend, um, you know, or make angry. But if you are a if you are a premium priced item in a category. So if I, I just 
disregard for a second the cause you're after. So whether you're you're How trying about, to yeah. you know do something um you know cuz the brands that we, we you know they're trying to do amazing things, they're trying to you know so regardless of what amazing things you're doing. If you are a premium price item in a category in the following year actually coming right into December and then into the turn of the year, you're vulnerable. There's kind of no other way to say that, right? Is you are if you're not ready for a well, potential slump. Yeah. So so one way or another, you're vulnerable, right? So yes, how you, you how you limit how vulnerable you are is probably what we're really talking about, right? So if you are a brand right. that um you're premium priced and you have a a very natural slant, you you probably started in, you know, kind of our, our natural friends um, and then moved your way into mass, right? So some of the um, some of the more uh, natural leaning mass grocers have been taking on, you know, some amazing brands to bring them in and kind of round out assortment. The problem is, is as you're ramping up your distribution and getting into those kind of um, premium or uh, natural leaning retailers, your exposure is really high, right? Because you've got you got to yeah. ramp up, you know, uh, production and try and get a lot of product in there. But meanwhile, what's going to be happening is these buyers are going to be looking categories, going, listen, they're slowing down. We're watching consumers contract what they buy. I'm going to try and make sure I give them value for money so that they buy, um, they buy the staples they need, and then we get them no, as much leave, bank. They're going to leave their store. I mean, Correct. put it very simple. Correct. They're going yeah. to leave the store. Well, no, and I don't think so. I think I think the they will fair leave the weather store ones, if they don't yeah. offer if they Correct. don't offer alternatives. Oh, yes, you're right. Too. Yeah, yeah. So they will leave the store. Yeah. For example, like a lot of people within the natural space specifically, um, nobody has a problem paying six bucks for a chip, nine bucks, mm -hmm. ten bucks for yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, six bucks for granola. Mm -hmm. Um you know, six bucks for chocolate clusters, mm -hmm. six, seven bucks for dried fruit when times are good. Yeah. When times aren't good and you have a consumer that dwells in this category or in these categories, a lot of them will opt to make their own. That's your, not yep. all, but yep. that is already a challenge, yep. right? Yeah. Or what do you expect them to do when money gets tight? Yeah, you know, I you will start to look for alternatives. Now, some of these categories yeah. may not have a multitude of alternatives. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you 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 stay in the categories yeah. as the end. Consumer. You may yeah. choose to exit said category for a short period of time, and that's that'll yeah. happen. I mean, it's ha it's happened every other downturn that I've been involved yeah. in. You know, you may buy when it times are good. You'll buy Commercial Drive organic coffee or Salt Spring coffee. Um, and you don't mind paying the fourteen ninety nine, a little bit more, three hundred yeah. gram, three forty gram. Mm -hmm. You'll do it, right? When times get tough, you may only do that on one of the four trips that month, and the other three, you may look and say, you know what, I don't want to mm -hmm. go to Folgers or Maxwell House, but you know what, maybe there's another alternative. Well, let's say it's look, not I can, organic. I can buy, I can whatever. buy a Starbucks dark roast, you know, but. Um, like a kilo of it for what I would normally buy, you know, kind of 300, Possibly. like 900 grams yes. of, of a Costco dark rose versus 300 and All what, of a sudden whatever the, that the size is, 350 grams, right? Well, for 300 the little... to 340. Yeah, 300 yeah. 340. 340, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're either going to pay yeah. 1499 for 300 or 340 grams, yeah. or, and not everybody has a Costco option, but you can yeah. buy these products at Real Canadian Superstore, if you're in like well, mostly in, I guess, the pricing but, slope is there, right? So whether whether you buy it at Costco point. or whatever, but yeah, it's going to be nineteen ninety nine for yeah. nine hundred eight grams, yeah. not fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, for half to a th yeah, those decisions will happen. I'm t I'm telling you, I I ain't going to buy Melita, but I may either opt for a larger size, or I'm going to have to find an alternative within that set. And yep. there are brands that maybe aren't as good. Maybe they're not organic, but they're still sourcing fair or whatever. And I might say, well, you know, at 10 or 11.99, it still stings a bit. If the close times enough, are tough, but I'm going to do it. But close enough. Yeah. Right. I mean, the one yeah. I walk down a lot, it's hard because we've had so many in the show. I do walk down the snack category and breakfast category. And it's very difficult. And it's not, 
to say that you're going to let's say you know i don't want to pick on the, I'm, I'm, this is not a, a picking on no at all but no. I, I go down potato actually the opposite tends really to mess that set. yeah no because i think their story is real yeah what i worry about is when things get a little tighter the guy who's already at scale, whether it's a kettle or it's a hard bite, I'm not saying those are natural chips and I'm not saying their packaging is natural. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But they're two for sixes. They're two for sevens, right? You may not go down to Lay's and Old Dutch, but you may go down from the higher, the higher perceived grades and cooler stories to not so high grade, not so cool, but better than what the other guys do. Yep. Because you yep. can find, yep. you know, to get two bags and maybe a hundred grams more yeah. near yeah, to I, the same I, price. That's that's hard. Yeah. Right. So to me, it's just you gotta be ready for this shit. Like you gotta yeah. be careful how how be careful where your product's at and yeah. how much is out there if you're not too sure where shit is going. 